Well, good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael. I will be your host for this morning, as I am every morning. I think we will be joined by Doreen Hannes this morning, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not positive. <laughs> with this weather the way it is, I'm not really sure where things stand with that, so you'll just have to bear with me. This morning, we are going to do our final day on administrative agencies and tyranny enshrined in law. Now, I'm not going to take any calls today, so please don't. Uh, We can talk about it uh, on Saturday, uh, tomorrow, Friday, by the way. We're going to have the uh, candidate who is running for the um, 8th District in Missouri. Uh, He's going to join us. He is the Democratic candidate, and uh, he's been put forth by his party as the appropriate uh, fella to run for the office on on the Democratic side. As you know, we've had uh, individuals, uh, we had uh, Bill Slants on. He was the guy from the Libertarian Party, and we will uh, endeavor to have the, uh, the, all of the candidates. We're working on Jason Smith. This gentleman's name is Hodges, and his name is Steve Hodges. He's a state rep right now, and he is out of the, um, uh, the area uh, near uh, Cape Girardeau. So I'm not sure exactly what market he's in. I think it's called East Prairie Market uh, District. I think it's called East Prairie. And uh, so he'll be joining us on Friday uh, over the phone. And um, we will uh, endeavor to make sure that you have an opportunity to hear Steve's position on where things stand for the uh, upcoming uh, event. Now that, by the way, that election will occur, I believe, in June. So um, uh, th- th- I think it's June 4th, if I'm not mistaken. So, And I did get a text from Doreen. She's going to be joining us at 8.15. So uh, in lieu of my doing a normal bullet points, um, you know, uh, this is such critical information. It's so terribly important that we understand and grasp the entire implications of where we are on this administrative stuff. I want to give you some examples because this is going to be our last day to wrap this stuff. And so uh, I'm going to give you some examples of some of the violations of the Constitution by administrative agencies and the Administrative Procedures Act. One, Article 1, Section 1 says, all this is Constitution, all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. The APA authorizes individuals and agencies to legislate and make law outside of Congress. Now, we covered that the other day when we, re- when we reiterated the fact that administrative agencies, which operate outside the law under a, a fiction of uh, judicial delegation, or excuse me, congressional delegation, that these agencies operate outside the law. They are not uh, elected. They are not approved, they are not even reviewed, and their decisions are not. And so they have what we call legislative power. They make law, and that is a violation of the Constitution. Furthermore, they have judiciary power, which is they hold private courts with an administrative law judge who determines whether you have violated their administrative rule. And the sanctions can include everything from fines and penalties and seizures all the way to imprisonment. The third aspect of this is that they have the rule of executive. They've they've absconded with executive authority. And remember now that this is a a foe of FAUX, a fake government that operates outside of the government. And Quite frankly, the vast majority of the laws and the rules and the regulations that you see on the books in the Federal Register are not actually congressionally approved. They are administrative agency laws. And at this point, they far outweigh what Congress has passed. Now, all legislative powers granted herein shall be vested in a Congress of the U.S. which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. What part of that doesn't our government understand? What part of that does not the administrative agency grasp? 
the APA and the Administrative Procedures Act grants agencies the opportunity to legislate and make laws that are outside the Constitution and outside the rules of, the, of, of Congress. Second issue is representatives, and this is Article 1, Section 2, representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states. The APA authorizes unapportioned taxes. How do we know that? Well, the IRS, ladies and gentlemen, is an administrative agency. Yes, the hated IRS is an administrative agency. Uh, Article 1, Section 7. All bills, all bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives. That's a constitutional dictate. It doesn't say some bills. It says all bills. The APA authorizes agencies that are not part of the House of Representatives to raise revenue. How do we know that? Well, we see the IRS. Perfect example. Can the EPA fine you? That's a revenue increase. It is. You can, dismi- you can argue it any way that you want. But the Environmental Protection Agency, and I'm just using one here, the SEC, the FDA, the USDA, all of these agencies, the FCC, they can impose fines. That is revenue generation. You can look at it any way you choose, but you cannot deny the realities. Article 1, Section 7. Every bill which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate shall, bef- shall, before it becomes a law, be presented to the President if he approve, he sign, if he doesn't, etc. The APA allows agencies to make law that is completely outside the scope of government. Congress doesn't hear it. The Senate doesn't review it. The House of Representatives doesn't review it. The President doesn't look at it and sign it. These are agencies which operate exclusively extra-constitutionally. Period. Every bill, doesn't say some bills, every bill, for, which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate. Now, that, <coughs> that's, that's Article 1, Section 7. You notice that Article 1, uh, Section 1, says all legislative power granted to the Congress shall consist of a Senate and House of Representatives. So Article 1 says you can't. everything has to be done through these two organizations, the Congress, House of Reps, and Senate. Article 7 says every bill which is passed and reiterates that, right? Does it not? I mean, Article 1, Section 1 says, this is who the body is that passes law. Article 1, Section 7 reiterates that same same exact statement and says, every bill which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate shall, before it becomes law, be added to the, uh, or shall be presented to the president, okay? So what you have to realize is that, uh, this is a, an agency and an organization that is completely outside the scope of government. Now, there are other methods that you can use to, to review this. Here's an example. We started out with Obamacare. And I want to I explain to you that, by the way, the HHS, which is the Health and Human Services, is an administrative agency also. So Health and Human Services is an administrative agency. And Obamacare is an administrative agency decision. How do we know that? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly how you'll know that. You'll know that because they have the opportunity to determine your health care. And when you go to argue or or, or appeal a decision, you will go before an administrative agency hearing. You will not go to a court of law. You will go in front of an administrative judge or an administrative hearing administrator who will hear your complaint and then rule against you because they are an administrative agency, not a constitutional court. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Doreen should be joining us, and I'm going to, comp- I'm going to run through a group of these, uh, these unconstitutional methods. We'll be right back.
Family Fun and Fitness, LLC, presents rape and assault prevention classes at Country Covered in Licking, Missouri. Men, women, boys, and girls, if you want to know how to stack the deck in your favor in a situation where violence is the only answer, this class is for you. Rape and assault prevention classes are held Monday evenings at 5.30 beginning February 11th and run through March 18th. Class size is limited, so call today, 417-260-1006, or register at Country Covered, 217 North Highway 63 in Licking. Okay, we are back. You're listening to America's Voice. We have been doing for three days now a review and a study on administrative agencies. And the reason that this is so terribly and critically important is because if you're, if you're not aware of how your rights are being ripped from you and stripped from you and usurped from you, you can't fight back. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we all have heard the argument they pass these laws in buckets, right? There's just too many laws. Let me tell you where these laws are coming from. They are not coming from Congress. They are coming from administrative agencies who have, for all intents and purposes, stolen the authority to be in control of you, your life, your business, your church, your school, everything and every aspect around you. They have stolen that authority. It does not belong to them. They weren't granted that authority by you. And Congress, as, as, I, re, as I reiterated uh, yesterday, Congress does not have the right, and this came from James Madison himself. No, uh, what, what prudent merchant, I'm sorry, uh, and I apologize, that's the wrong quote. Um, Congress does not have the authority to hand their authority off to anyone else. I read that from John Locke, excuse me. John Locke made it very clear that you, you do not give Congress authority, which they can then turn around and delegate out to someone else. I believe Doreen has joined us. Good morning, Doreen. Good morning. I have joined you. Thank you. And, Thank you. And, and I, I'm behind and, schedule because I didn't get to hear yesterday's program. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, we're, we, you know, we've been running over this stuff on administrative agencies, and it's yeah. so critically important um, that, that, you know, we're making sure that everyone understands exactly who they are, what they are, how they operate. And then th- th- I want to spend this morning covering where they've gone wrong and then what we need to do to try to eliminate them. No and there, problem. There's only one way that we can eliminate them, and that is to do it legislatively. We right. can have our House and our Senate here in the state of Missouri, and we've got to start here because we can't start on the federal side. We just don't have the weight. We don't have the pull. We don't have the authority. We don't have the power. Mm-hmm. So what we can do is we can start here in our own state and make Missouri stand out as an individual state that has separated itself from the administrative pro- process and the administrative policies and administrative procedures act. And the first thing that we need to do is pass a legislative initiative that will say no administrative procedures act and or agency has any authority in the state of Missouri. Right. Now, that let me tell you something, people. If any one of our senators or our House members has the brass to submit that, let me tell you, you're going to know exactly how how dangerous that statement really is because the national press, the media, and government will be all over that like a hobo on a ham sandwich. Oh, boy. (laughs) I'm telling you that if our government ever hears that a state is going to pass a policy or a a new law that nullifies administrative agencies, the fur is going to begin to fly immediately. Right. Now, here's here's another aspect of that. Um, A great deal of the state of Missouri's budget, last year it was approximately one-third, just over one-third of the entire budget of the state of Missouri comes through federal funding, which is agency funding. There you go. So the the argument is, you know, effectively one of, uh, well, we can't do that because we'd risk federal funding. Right. With right. our debt instruments. The federal government doesn't have any funds. Right. It's all our money anyway. Right. So let's stop giving it to them and then taking it back along with a lot of strings. Exactly. One, so, of, my, one of my favorite things out of the Declaration of Independence really 
sums this up. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their, their substance. substance. Absolutely. Yep. And folks, you hear me say they are eating out our substance. You hear me say it over and over and over again. In fact, I think I've probably said it 10 or 15 times in the last three days. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is because this is exactly what our founders found wrong with England, not Washington. Correct. Now we've replicated exactly where England has taken us. I do want to make one point. I got an email the other day. And this guy, uh, uh, good, uh, great series, keep up the great work. I will, uh, I'll take you to task on one point. Repeatedly you've stated these agencies have the right to do certain things. Uh, let me clarify that point. They don't have the right to do these things. They have, abs- they have absconded and stolen and given themselves the right to do these things. Mm-hmm. He goes on to say, in fact, no government agency has any right at all. Government and its agencies are devoid of rights. Government and its agents have duties and responsibilities and may have constitutional authority but they do not have rights if we speak of government agencies having rights we lead people to believe that the constitution provides rights to the government it does not rights fall within the province of personal and individual natural rights as recognized and codified in the bill of rights attached to the constitution i think it is a small but important point please let me know what you think keep up the good work so I agree, and, I, and if, I've made, if I've given anyone the misimpression that our government has any right at all to do anything, that was certainly a, a, a deleterious on my part. Our government does not have rights. They, have the, they are delegated authority by us as citizens, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, I want to uh, go back to this list here because... I want to underst- I want you to understand exactly where our Congress has gone wrong. One in delegating these authorities to these agencies, and two, I'm going to give you some examples. Article one, section eight: Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, impose excises, pay debts, provide for the common defense, general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. Here's where the APA has gone wrong on this. They authorize agencies that are outside the United States government itself and, and the government, the truly duly constituted government, to collect non-uniform taxes, duties, imposts, and excises, and to pay debts and provide for the common undermining of the defense of citizens and establish tyranny in the United States. How do we know that? Can you think of one example? I can think of a hundred right off the top of my head, but any agency that levies a tax on you that is not apportioned across the board to everyone is in violation of the Constitution. Period. Period. Now, what is a tax? Well, Obamacare is one example. Obamacare is one example. Now, even the Supreme Court ruled that Obamacare is a tax. In, in, in disagreement with the government during the Supreme Court hearing that it wasn't a tax but a penalty. And you'll notice the word penalty. You know why the Congress or or the government argued in the Supreme Court that the Obamacare uh, fines were a penalty and not a tax? Because a penalty is not necessarily viewed the same way as a tax constitutionally. Correct. (laughs) Now, the court came around and said, well, sorry, it's really not a penalty, it's a tax. Which tells you right off the bat that Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises. Here's the example. Congress didn't have the authority and, and the ability to deem it a, a penalty, or a tax, I'm sorry, because it wouldn't have been apportioned and evenly divided amongst the states. Perfect example. Now, Another aspect of this that you want to recognize about Obamacare, by the way, Obamacare did not originate in the House. What does it say in the Constitution that all bills, Article 1, Section 7, all bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives? Doreen, where did, it, where did Obamacare originate? It originated in the Senate. Bingo! And, $64,000 and question. It. You win. Right. <laughs> Confetti flying, fireworks expiring. 
Here's the problem, people. The Senate was who initiated Obamacare. And the Constitution is very clear. Article 1, Section 7. All bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives. It did not. It started in the Senate. Therefore, on its face, Obamacare is unconstitutional. Prima facie. That means on its face. Not to you, Doreen, but to the listeners. Okay. Here's another example. To borrow money on the credit of the United States. Article 1, Section 8. Where do we see that the Administrative Procedures Act allows agencies to or authorizes them to borrow money on the credit of the United States, which is outside of the constitutional authorities that we have granted to our Congress? Well, for starters, the, the Federal uh, Reserve. The Federal Reserve borrows money, and it is an agency. The Federal Reserve is not a government entity. It is not part of the Treasury. It is a federal administrative agency. The Federal, the federal Reserve is an agency. It is not a, duly part of the, a dual part of the Treasury. Absolutely. Here, here's the other issue with the Federal Reserve. They passed the Federal Reserve Act, effectively abrogating their duty under the Constitution to coin money and set the value thereof. However, there was no constitutional amendment establishing that they had the, the right to Reserve. do that. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. So, so on its face, it's, it's fraudulent and unconstitutional. Well, you know, the, the simple truth is that we have had so much of this over the, over years. America has become complacent and fallen asleep. And we have allowed tyranny to usurp our rights and hand those rights over to an unlawful agency who doesn't have anything, any authority to act on our behalf whatsoever. And yet they claim to. Right. They also regulate commerce, not only with foreign nations, but among the several states. How do we know that? Wickard versus Felburn is uh, probably the absolute best Supreme Court case to Bingo. clarify that. Now, Wickard versus Filburn was in 1946 or 47, I've forgotten. And basically what it says is this guy who was growing grain and using it to feed his own animals and, and feed his own family and wasn't selling it was still entering commerce because of the fact that by his growing his own grain, he was effectively affecting commerce because he wasn't buying grain from someone else so right. therefore by growing his own he affected commerce and therefore he was barred well yes and here's the other thing about wickard versus Felburn. the predication for that entire case is part of the agricultural adjustment acts where they paid farmer Felburn to not grow wheat for one season and he took that money so they got their hooks into him by him agreeing to the authority of this agency by taking funding. There you go. And that is always the hook for everything. The administrative agencies have no power over you unless you agree to be licensed, regulated, and subsidized here's by a, them. Here's a perfect example. Departments of Motor Vehicles. They claim that they have the right to license your ability to travel. Is that, is that lawful? Of course not. They have no authority to license your ability to travel or to drive a vehicle. It's a revenue-raising scheme, which is a violation of the Constitution, because motor vehicle departments, even though they're statewide, are still administrative agencies. That's the, see, folks, this is so embedded into our culture Every license that you, I read it to you yesterday, where Patrick Henry, where he made his famous statement, made it because a, a minister refused to get a license to preach, and they and they flayed him till his bones were exposed, and three days later beat him to death. And Patrick Henry said, "What? What did Patrick Henry say? I'm going to read it to you. Is life so dear, or peace so sweet?" as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, 
give me liberty or give me death. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. More Americans are filing for unemployment. The Labor Department just reported 362,000 people filed for first-time jobless benefits last week, topping the estimate for 355,000. That's also up 20,000 from the prior week, which was revised up slightly. Fox Business Network's Diane Macedo. Consumer prices flat last month. A car bomb explodes at a checkpoint in Damascus, Syria, with at least 53 people reported killed. Rescue crews picking their way through shattered windows and clouds of smoke after a powerful car bomb exploded near the headquarters of President Assad's ruling party, wounding up to 200. The blast coming as a number of mortar rounds lands in government-controlled areas of the capital. Fox News Radio's Emily Wither, 18 more reported dead in a government airstrike on a rebel field hospital further south in Dara, Syria, where an uprising started two years ago. Fox News, we report, you decide. The area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. Online at westplainspawn.com. Top of the line, new and used optics from Nikon, Leopold, Burris, Redfield, Zeiss, and Schmidt and Bender. Ask about their selection of binoculars, laser sights, and night vision goggles. With new arrivals every week, the area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. 1713 West U.S. Highway 160 or shop online at westplainspawn.com. The New York Times recently did a story on preppers. The story concluded that prepping was very rational behavior. Preppers are doctors, lawyers, teachers, builders and plumbers, people just like you. At Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance, we specialize in the products and knowledge to provide your own safety net for troubled times. Isn't it time you joined your Ozark's neighbors who are already working toward independence? That's Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance, 3225 Highway 62 East in Mountain Home, 870-492-4030. Complete service and satisfaction is the Earl's Dodge Jeep difference from all the other dealers in the Ozarks. Hello, I'm Janet, and I invite you to come check out our new and pre-owned on the lot at Earl's Dodge Jeep on North Highway 63 across from the fairgrounds in West Plains, where we go out of our way to make you happy. That means doing what it takes to make sure you're satisfied with your total package on your new purchase, which means taking care of you after the sale. It all adds up at Earl's Dodge Jeep, where buying a vehicle is as simple as it should be. From the Point Weather Center, there's a winter storm warning in effect. For this morning, cloudy skies with sleet changing to freezing rain as we head through the day. Up to half an inch of ice is possible along with gusty winds high near 30. Freezing rain this evening, clearing later tonight, low 28, mostly sunny Friday. I'm staff meteorologist Jim Rinaldi, and for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. All right. We've got a lot to get through, and we've only got a half hour left here of the show, folks. So I'm going to just kind of rip through some of these examples. Uh, Article uh, 1, Section 8, coining money. The Federal Reserve, for all intents and purposes, while it doesn't coin money, it prints and manufactures money out of nothing. Therefore, the entire Federal Reserve system, which, by the way, is a private bank labeled an administrative agency, has no constitutional authority whatsoever. And even though there was a constitution or there there was a bill passed in 1913 called the Federal Reserve Bank Act, that that does not give Congress the authority as we've stated repeatedly over and over and over again to transmit or to translate their their delegated authority onto someone else. And in this case, the Federal Reserve is simply a middleman put in place for the opportunity to make money at our expense. Um, to, uh, to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court, only Congress has the authority to do that. And yet yesterday I gave you example after example after example of how you can go before an administrative law judge. Now, those administrative law judges, for all intents and power, for all intents and purposes, excuse me, are, are a tribunal that is inferior to the Supreme Court. And they are and not only that, but they are outside the constitutional court system. So they're doubly wrong. There are only, the, the only authorized court is the, con, is the Supreme Court, constitutionally. They did give Congress the authority to create inferior courts that are, are in, I'm sorry, to constitute uh, courts inferior to the Supreme Court, which would be your federal district courts. But under no circumstances did they give Congress the authority in the Constitution to go out there and hand off that authority to the EPA 
where you can go before an administrative judge and have a hearing based on, and by the way, who, who owns that judge lock, stock, and barrel and pays him. So who do you think, whose favor is he going to find in? Uh, they always find it's, you know, you're, you're going to the agency to ask the agency to not punish you for something that they deem you have offended them in. True, true. Now, we're, we're, we're going to go to another example here. They, uh, the Article 1, Section 8, to raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for a longer term than two years. Well, guess what? The APA has enabled a number of agencies, including the Central Intelligence Agency and the Department of Homeland Security, to effectively raise private armies. The CIA pretty much does what they want globally, and they have their own private army, and they have been uh, kept in, in, in positions where they have been uh, in, in a term for longer than two years, and the appropriations are done in such secret that we can't even track. It's all black money. Not to mention the Department of Homeland Security, which stated itself on its face that it is building a civilian, a, a civilian force that has the same funding and the same power and the same authority as our military. And that came out of our president's mouth. Mm -hmm. Uh, They cannot make rules for the government. Right? And yet, here we have agencies that constantly and consistently do exactly that. Now, I'm going to go another step further. Article 1, Section 8, to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. The APA bypasses Congress and the people's militia by creating their own private armies, FBI, CIA, DHS, the FCC, the SEC. All of these groups are armed. All of these groups have have military power and authority. And they're all... Notice that there's always an A after their name. That stands for agency. Mm -hmm. The USDA also has their own SWAT team. And what does USDA stand for? (laughs) United States Department of Agriculture, or as I term it, Uncle Sam Destroying Agriculture. Now, remember, United States Department of Agriculture is an agency. It is not a lawfully constituted, congressionally uh, approved agency. Or, or congressionally, uh, or, or I should say constitutionally approved organization. It's not, there's nothing in the Constitution that says you have to have a USDA. No. Nope. And Congress, again, I repeat it over and over and over again, Congress has no right to delegate the authority we have given to them and pass it on to anyone else. And John Locke wrote that in 1690, folks. Okay. <clears throat> Article 1, Section 8, to make, and I want you to hear this language clearly, to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers and all other powers vested in this Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or officer thereof. The APA removes this exclusivity and it removes the exclusive lawmaking capabilities from Congress and hands it to these departments and these bureaucrats and these offices of all of these various agencies. It eliminates Congress by actually bypassing them, making law without them, and then holding their own judicial review so that Congress doesn't even have, and the courts in the judiciary don't even have the right to review their decisions. Right. And what the agencies always claim is that they have broad authority granted to them by Congress in whatever particular area they're operating in. Broad authority. Well, the, the word they use is broad discretion. And it's always in quotes. Broad authority or broad discretion. Let me tell you what discretion is. Discretion means that it's up to the mind, the subjective mind, of whoever the head of that agency is. Remember, the word discretion in the law means that it is an opinion, not a fact. A judge can exercise discretion. No, he can't. The judge is there simply to rule on the law. 
and he doesn't have the right to exercise discretion. That's called judicial discretion. A judge is not there to rule or, or to make a decision based on his discretion. He is there to rule on the law and only the law. And the law is clear cut. The law is not subjective, it is objective. Objective means that it is cast in stone. Subjective means that it is it is up to the whim and the will of the of whoever is looking at it and how they review it. And we do not give our judges, and our Constitution very clearly states, that they may not utilize discretion. They have to operate under the rule of law, and they don't. I'm going to give you a perfect example. You go and get yourself into trouble with the IRS. The IRS has no lawful authority to collect taxes because we didn't give that to them in the Constitution. Congress delegated that authority to them without our authority. And guess what? If you, if you, do, if, if you do get yourself in trouble with the IRS, you go before an IRS judge. Did you know that the bankruptcy courts are part of the APA? That the bankruptcy courts are regulated by the Administrative Procedures Act? Mm -hmm. Because they are an administrative agency, nothing more and nothing less. And yet, you can go to prison for violating IRS law. I can raise my hand to that one. <laughs> so, you cannot have an agency. I mean, look at it this way, people. The IRS just on its face, is unconstitutional. But the, but the power that they have absconded with on the judiciary side of, of, of the issue and the legislative means that it is operating in a treasonous environment. It is operating as a treasonous entity outside extra-constitutionally. Uh, you know, I'm going to give you another example. What's ex post facto law mean? Are you, are you familiar uh, with ex post facto? I believe ex post facto is law that's ancillary to an actual law that was passed. Right. A ex post facto means you can't go backward, right? And so here's an example. When you go out and you are pulled over by an agency and you are, are given a – or you are fined by an agency for an action that may have actually occurred before their creation. In other words – Here's an example. You've got a farm, and, you, and that farm has been in operation for the last 112 years by your family. The EPA didn't exist 112 years ago. Right. And yet they can come out now and say, you are violating some tenet that we have put into place without constitutional authority in the first place. And as a result of that, we are going to fine you $5,000 a day until you correct the problem. That's their typical behavior, yes. I mean, that, that, that settles the whole thing right there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you cannot have organizations that operate in an extra-constitutional fashion and have a republic and either that or a true democracy. You sure. cannot have them. In other words, this is like, I've used this example before, it's the difference between matter and antimatter. You cannot have both of those entities, in the same time, at the same place, because they are reactive against each other. In other words, they cannot occupy the same space and time at a, at, at a given moment. And that is what we have here, people. What we have here are administrative agencies that operate outside of the Constitution. And as soon as you have that, that is the antimatter to the matter of constitutionality. Those two items cannot, cannot occupy the same space and time. And perfect example of this in play. You cannot have a Second Amendment and an ATF trying to, to limit and, and restrict those, the not, shall not be infringed portion of it. Can you? I mean, shall not be infringed. Just that word alone, the, that phrase alone, shall not be infringed, means that the ATF is unconstitutional on its face. Exactly. Period. End of argument, end of discussion. Well, we have the right to... No, you don't have the right to limit anything. 
You don't have the right to limit anything because the Constitution was meant to bind you down with chains of, of law. So that they couldn't tyrannize us. Exactly. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to wrap this up with a couple of ideas about what we can do going forward to pre- prohibit and limit administrative agencies in our lives and on our society. We'll be right back. I know what you're thinking, Bunk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? Dirty Harry gets all his ammo from the battery station. John Rambo, you guessed it. He gets his ammo from the battery station, too. So if you need ammo, go to the place where the guys who know about ammunition go, the battery station. They have one of the largest supplies of ammunition in the area. So make sure you're stocked up and don't get low on shells. Go to the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue in West Plains. The deals at U.S. Cellular's unbelievable sales event are so incredible, even guys who believe in aliens can't believe them. Open your eyes, sheeple. They are among us. But smartphones under $100 and up to $400 in savings? Conspiracy theory. U.S. Cellular's unbelievable sales event. Now through April 1st. U.S. Cellular. Hello, Hello better. Phone offer valid on select smartphones. Other charges and restrictions apply. See store for details. Your mission, if you choose to accept. Call 417-934-6132. Go to Miller Accounting at 230 West 1st Street, Mountain View, Missouri. There you will have your tax return prepared and e-filed or drop off your information at the UPS store, 1404 Southern Hills Center, West Plains. Get your refund by direct deposit, check, or debit card. That's Miller Accounting. Mention this station's call letters and receive $10 off. Caution, this offer will self-destruct on April 15th. Who's got the best chili around? We're going to find out February 23rd at the West Plains Civic Center. It's the 7th Annual West Plains Public Library Foundation's Chili Cook-Off. Brought to you by West Plains Civic Center, Great Rivers Distributing, and Diamond Media. Put your chili game to the test, or just come sample them all and listen to live music by Bad Mojo. Tickets are $5 in advance or $7 at the door. To reserve your booth, call Sherry Russell at 417-256-4775 or stop by the West Plains Public Library. All right, we're down to minutes here, folks, and i got a lot of stuff to cover. I've got to read a couple of things. One, the Amateur Ham Radio Club in West Plains is going to be offering an entry-level ham radio course that starts on the 23rd of February. That's on a Saturday, and it runs for 10 to 12 weeks every Saturday. Now, the course starts at noon and goes for about two hours, and uh, this is located at the Howell County Ambulance Building on K Highway. That's the one right across the street from the Best Western on 63. So it's in the Howell County Ambulance Building on K Highway. Um, it starts at noon. Let me see here. It starts at noon and goes for two hours, starting on Saturday, February 23rd. There is a book that you have to purchase that costs about 20 bucks. You can get it from Amazon.com. And if you're going to do that, please go click off the link on our website at americasvoicenow.org and then enter the title of the book. It's called Ham Radio License Manual with CD. And uh, I'll put this up on the website and also up on our Facebook page as well. If you can't get it before the the first class, don't worry about it. There's a guy by the name of John Price you can call if you've got any questions. His number is 417-372-1135. That's John Price at 417-372-1135. Also want to thank West Plains Pawn and Gun and Jewelry. You can find them at westplainspawn.com, 160, uh, one, uh, Route 160, just about a mile and a half uh, of sh- uh, on past Walmart on the right-hand side, 4500 Guns Undercover, 417-256-3000. Also our friends over at Pizza Hut, they have a great lunch special, uh, which you can a- attend every day from about 11 till 2, and then on Tuesday night, families eat free. I'm sorry, children eat free. My apology. Children eat free under 12. Boy, he would have gotten, I would have gotten in trouble for that one. Yeah, huh? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue, 257-7799. And you can find them on thebatterystation.com. Our friends over at Stone Construction, Bill Stone, 2930116. 
uh, Chantilly's Artisan Bakery at 255-2253. She's the best damn bakery in 100 miles. She's at number two, Evans Arcade, off the square in West Plains, 255-2253. Our friends at Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance at Ozark, MTN, selfreliance.com, 870-492-4030, half mile east of Walmart on Highway 62 in Mountain Home. Uh, also want to thank Jason from the uh, uh, Wits End Classic Barbershop, uh, right on the square in West Plains. Best place you can get a $10 haircut. Okay. I've got to do those, folks. That's those. Are, that's the reason that this show is on the air. So, uh, unless you want to pony up five or seven grand a month, you're just going to have to listen to the commercials. Here's what we have to recognize, people: no action by government agents or agencies are free of the restrictions imposed by the Fourth Amendment or other articles of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And so, what we need is legislation written in our state, and we're going to spearhead this under Restore Missouri. We're going to create some legislative language that we're going to submit into some of the legislators in our area who we know are supportive of our projects and uh, and of liberty. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to give the state of Missouri the right to be free from federal administrative agencies. Now, I don't know whether this will pass, and I'm here to tell you, the minute that this legislation hits the streets, the minute it hits the wire, there is going to be hell to pay. You are going to see an uproar across the board, but part of the goal of that is to educate America about what is wrong with administrative agencies. Most Americans are operating in a fog and have absolutely no idea this is even going on. Right. And so the first thing we need to do is what? Educate. The second thing we need to do is inform. How do we inform them? We get the word out by creating a ruckus, and hopefully enough people will hear the gunfire, if you will, so that they'll start to say, wow, what is this all about? Mm -hmm. Then we motivate them by ticking them off, frankly, and we activate them to get into their own state legislators and our state legislature and say, we want this done. Here's the way it works. No action, and, and, and these are the basic premise. No action by government agency or agents I'm sorry, agencies or agents are free of the restrictions imposed by the Fourth Amendment or other articles of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. There are no legal actions apart from criminal and civil with the full constitutional protections that are applied and established for each one. In other words, you cannot have a legal action that is either not criminal or not civil. If it's administrative, it's got to go. Now do you get how this works? They've either got to charge you in a criminal court or they've got to charge you in a civil suit, but they cannot charge you administratively. They cannot fine you. They cannot drag you before an administrative judge to answer for your actions. They can only do that through a criminal action or a civil action. And remember what we talked about yesterday. Administrative agencies are quasi. They don't exist. They are a fiction but we're all falling for the lie. There, are, there can be no court or judicial proceeding apart from a duly constituted component of the independent, constitutionally designed judiciary where the protections of trial by jury cannot be suspended or restricted. And that means, folks, you can't go to an administrative agency court and have them say, ah, sorry, you can't have a trial by jury. Case in point, Morning Landary. They were denied a trial by jury because it was an administrative action. So had a jury heard that case, they would have come back and said, let them test the damn cheese. Absolutely. But there was no jury to be had because they were charged and they were held down by an administrative agency who operated extra constitutionally outside the law. Yes. And their right to trial by jury was suspended and restricted. Uh, Point number four, and these have to be embodied into language. Legislative bodies cannot delegate the power to make law or confer upon anyone the power of making any rule or regulation that has the force of law. Remember what I said. Administrative agencies create regulations that parade about as law, and yet they are not. Now, you can put on a military uniform and couch yourself in ribbons with a fancy hat 
and a dress blue jacket. And you can parade around the square here and call yourself a general with four stars on each lapel. However, that doesn't make you a general. Now, you may well fool a significant number of the people standing there watching you march in the parade. But it doesn't make you a general. And if you go out, and it, it can be proven, because you cannot order a military organization to do anything. You're just a guy who bought a jacket at a military surplus unit. <laughs> Nothing more. Who dressed up. Who right. dressed up. You are dressed, dressed up. up like a general, but you have none of the authority, you have none of the rights, and you have none of the privileges of being that military executive. Right. And so that's the way you have to view agencies. They parade about as if they have authority. And we are fooled. And by the way, the courts back them up. The courts back them up. So you have to recognize that this is a fiction. It's a, it's a fairy tale being played on us. Okay. It's all a fraud, Mike. It, it, it is a fraud. It is a fraud. I don't mean, I don't mean to, 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 make, to make the language less uh, harsh. Uh, you know me. I, <laughs> I'm not afraid of harsh language. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is as harsh as it gets. We are being stripped of our rights and our constitutional authorities have been delegated by a, by a Congress who doesn't have the right to do so. That is fraud. That is treason. It is tyranny. You want harsh words? Treason and tyranny are the words for the day. The only constitutional exceptions to these rules can concern the military, military discipline, military justice, and in the time of a war or invasion, martial law. That's it, people. You cannot have an extra constitutional organization that is setting up and making rules and regulations that parade about as laws, like a general in a cheap costume. So here's the bullets. No action by a government agent or agency is free of the restrictions imposed by the Fourth Amendment or other articles of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. There are no legal actions apart from criminal and civil, with the full constitutional protections established for each of those. In other words, if, you are, if you're charged criminally, you have the full right of the Constitution behind you. That's why we have a thing called the Miranda warnings and all the rest of that. In a civil trial, you have the same thing. You have the right to a trial by jury. And so what we need to state is a very clear law that says no legal action, apart from civil and criminal, the, and, and, and both of those have full constitutional protections established for each. There can be no court or judicial proceeding apart from a duly constituted independent judiciary, wherein the protections of trial by jury cannot be suspended or restricted. Legislative bodies cannot delegate the power to make law or confer upon anyone else the power to make any rule or regulation that has the force of law or parades about as a general in a costume. And the only constitutional exception to these rules is related directly to military. That's it. What we need to do is pass a legislative initiative in the state of Missouri that basically says the same thing we're saying in the Firearms Preservation Act. No administrative agency of the federal government has any authority here that they are null and void on their face, past, present, and future. And, furthermore, that all of the un unconstitutional state or federal agencies within the state of Missouri are hereby eliminated and null and void. You want to see, you want to see a, a legal civil war start? When we get this legislation into the House and into the Senate, you watch and see what happens. This will kick off an unbelievable fracas. I want to thank you guys for joining with us, and thank you, Doreen. You're, you're, you're wonderful, and you're so responsive, and, and I'm so grateful for your assistance. Thank you very much. Well, no problem. Thank you. You have a great day. You too. Folks, tomorrow we are going... Sorry about that. For tomorrow, we are going to have um, uh, Mr. Hodges, uh, Steve Hodges, join with us uh, to give us his ideas about the Democratic side on the 8th District. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Let's get to the point. Well, let me get to the point.
FM News Talk for the Ozarks is FM 107.1. The Point. KBMV. Birch. Fox News Radio. I'm Dave Anthony. Gunfire in Las Vegas early this morning. There apparently was a rolling gun battle on the strip. A police spokesman says people in two vehicles were shooting at each other. The driver of one was killed and crashed into several cars, including a taxi. 